welcome friends this is our 21st video of this course in this video we will cover the topic of for loop for loop in python the for loop in python is used to iterate over a sequence of items the sequence of items may be a list a tuple or set the for loop is executed for each item of the given sequence here in the for loop the indentation is mandatory if we see the syntax of for loop then this is the syntax first of all we have to write the for keyword then we have to write a variable i will tell about what is this variable in this video and then in keyword and then we have to write the sequence the sequence is our list or tuple or maybe anything after colon we have to press enter and then it will take us to the next line the loop with the indentation like this this is the indentation part which is highlighted here after indentation we have to write the body of the loop so this is the syntax for for loop if we see this flow chart here in this flow chart of the for loop it is shown that for each element of the sequence it will check whether it is the last element of the sequence or not if it is the not last element of the sequence then it will go to the body of the loop and the operation which is mentioned in the for loop body will be performed and again it will go to the second element then it will check whether now it is last element or not if again it is not the last element then again it will go to the body of the loop and same operation will be performed on the second element also this cycle will be repeated until we reach the last element of the sequence when we reach the last element of the sequence then we will go to the exit path of the loop means the loop has ended now now if we some examples of for loop here the first simple example is for i in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 This is a simple example of for loop. As per the syntax, we have to write for keyword. Then we have to write a variable name. This variable name may be of your choice. You can write x, y, z, anything here. Then we have to write in. After that, we have to pass a sequence here. My sequence is in the in the form of the list here, which is containing five elements. One, two, five. After sequence, we have to write a colon. And pressing enter will take us to the next line of this code. with the indentation and after this we have to write the body of the loop this is the body of the loop means we are printing the variable i here now if i run this then the output is like this 1 2 3 4 5 5 so what is happening here let's see it is my code i have written four keyword then it is my variable and it is my sequence here now first of all as per the code i will take the value of 1 from this sequence and as per the body of the loop it will print i means it will print 1 then i will go to the next element of the sequence means 2 and again it will execute the body of the loop means it will print i then it will print 2 similarly it will go to 3 and it will print 3 then it will go to 4 and it will print 4 and it will go to 5 and it will print 5 5 is the last element of the sequence so now the loop will end so this is how for loops works if we see one more example like for x in i am writing another list here which contains random numbers these are the random numbers again i will print these random numbers one by one using the for loop so x first of all will take the value of 2 1 2 which is at the first position of the sequence and it will print it like 2 1 2 then x will take the second value of the sequence 3 3 4 and it will print it like 3 3 4 then x will take these three elements one by one l will print these three elements one by one as per the body of the loop so this is the second example of for loop 
now here using the for loop on a list of numbers this is the same example as we have done here here is the list also or we can write like we have a predefined list which contains some numbers 11 12 13 14 15 this is my predefined list with name a now if i want to print each element of this list one by one then i will use for loop for i in i have to write this sequence my sequence is saved as a list in a i so i can write a here then i have to press enter it will take me to the next line where i have to use the body of the loop print i so it will print 11 12 13 14 15 one by one it will automatically print each element in the next line so first of all i will take the value of 11 it will print it and 12 then 13 14 and the last value of the sequence is 15 it will print 15 as the last element of this sequence after printing the 15 the loop has ended now we can use the for loop on a list of strings also suppose we have some city's name like this this is a list which is containing some city's name these are the strings as you know now if you want to print these city names one by one then we will use for loop for then i have to write my variable name i am using variable name as city here for city in then i have to write my sequence my sequence is in cities then print city you have to remember one thing here the variable that you have chosen here you have to use the same variable in the print function if i run this then you can see the output first of all it is printing the first element then second then third and then fourth so this is how we can also use for loop on a list of strings we can also use the for loop on tuple of strings suppose we have a tuple which is containing some country's name like this this is my tuple which is containing four country names the tuple is represented by these round brackets now if i want to print each country names one by one then i can use for loop i am using the variable name as country here then in then we have to write our sequence my sequence is stored as a tuple in this country's variable i will print country if you notice i have used this variable name country here and same is used in the print function similarly i have used city name variable here as same is used in the print function now if i run this then it will show each country name from start of the sequence to the end of the sequence in each separate line so this is how we can use for loop on tuple of strings now if you want to use for loop on a set of strings suppose i am considering this sequence but now i will use it as a set if you want to learn about set then you can watch our videos about set now these curly braces indicates that it is a set we will use the same code for country in countries and print the country which is my variable name here so as you can see as per the properties of the set when set is printed it shows the random elements if you see here india is at first place and us is at second place but when we used the for loop on this set then japan is at second place now and india is at first place and us is at third place so this is the property of the set means it shows the randomness we can also use the for loop on a dictionary also suppose we have a dictionary like this which contains some name and some numbers it is my dictionary which is containing 
three items and each item is a combination of key and value the first one is key and after colon there is a value similarly the shyam is key and two is the value now if we use for loop on this dictionary suppose i write for name in d and print the name then it will print only the keys okay all the values are ignored here it is printing only the names which are the keys so this is how for loop works on a dictionary now if you want to use for loop on a string suppose i have a string like this welcome to data science world this is my string which is containing five words and many characters now if i use for loop on this string for s in s print s then it will show the output like this it will print each character of this string one by one w e l c o m e and after e there is a space so it will consider this space also then it will print the next character of the string this string is also a form of sequence so if you see here i have used the small s as my variable name and my string is stored in this s capital s variable so this is how we can use the for loop on a string also now using the for loop with a range suppose we want to print some numbers from 1 to 100 then we can use the range function if you want to learn about range function then you can see this video for x in range 11 i am printing the numbers from 0 to 10 so i will print like this so if you know about the range function then automatically by default it starts from 0 and it will print one item less which is mentioned in this brackets if i mention 11 here then it will print the elements till 10 only if i print if i write here like 100 then it will print the elements till 99 means one item will be less always while using the range functions and by default it will start from 0 so what is happening here first of all x will take the first element of this sequence here the sequence of this code is in the range functions which is starting from 0 to and ending to 99 so it will take 0 as its first element and then print it then it will take 1 as its second elements and then print it similarly it will go till the last elements of this sequence and the last element is 99 so it will print 99 and the loop will end now our next example is we have to multiply each element of the given list with 2 using the for loop suppose i have a list like this we have a table of 2 now we want to multiply each element of this table with 2 so we can do it with the help of for loop we will write for x in table which is our sequence then we have to write in the body of the loop i am writing x equal to x multiplied by 2 means each element will be multiplied by 2 and print x so if i run this then you can see a new table is generated what is happening here first of all x will take the value of 2 from this sequence and it will multiply it by 2 and the new value will be added to x now and it will get printed so here 4 will get printed again x will go to the next item of the sequence means it will take now 4 now this 4 will be multiplied by 2 and will be saved in this x and this x will be printed so 8 will be printed similarly it will take all elements one by one and at the last this x will take the value of 20 so 20 will be get multiplied by 2 and it will be get saved in this x and it will get printed so 40 is printed as the 
last element of the output. So this is how we can create a table of 4 by using the table of 2. Next example is verifying the odd at even numbers from the given list. Suppose we have a list of numbers. This is my list which is containing some numbers. Okay, I have to identify which number is odd and which number is even. So I can use the for loop here. And the code is this. For i in numbers if the number is divisible by 2 then it is a even number. Okay, if the number is even then it will print this statement. If the number is odd then it will print this statement. So if I run this then this is the output of this program. 11 is an odd number means it is not divisible by 2. Similarly 12 is an even number which is divisible by 2. So this is how we can create a short program to check whether a number is even or odd using the for loop. I have an exercise for you. You have to write the output of this given code. Here we have two list, list A and list B. List A is containing a strings and list B is also containing some strings. Then we have used for loop on these two strings and you have to print the output. More advanced features of the for loop will be covered in the another playlist of the course which is advanced data analysis with python. Friends if you like the videos of our course then please subscribe to our channel and also share the playlist of this course with your friends who want to learn data analysis with python.